The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the type of data that can be transferred from Hypersizer to GATIA during a structural design process. The use case is a commercial aircraft wing box. The specific structural assembly used in this demonstration is the upper surface structural skin. To be structurally efficient and lightweight, it is designed as a composite stiffened panel. With this simple surface model, Hypersizer is able to rapidly generate an initial detailed design. After PDR, or preliminary design review, and during detailed design, Hypersizer automatically sizes each stiffened panel to achieve the final stiffener shape and cross-sectional dimensions and then exports this data to the CAD model. The CATIA model of the top skin has the stiffeners discreetly modeled. We will now focus on a single stiffener for examination. Here we can see that the stiffener dimensions, as optimized by Hypersizer, have been imported to the CATIA model. Hypersizer also exports this data to the Detailed Finite Element Model, or DFEM. The DFEM has discreetly mesh stiffeners. For viewing purposes, only a subassembly of the wing top skin is used in the remainder of the video to identify the correspondence between the Hypersizer and CATIA models. The flange widths and thicknesses are represented with beam elements and the stiffener webs and skin with shell elements. Finite elements that have the same color belong to the same property set and represent the individual detail design points such as the skin between two stringers and two ribs. When the DFEM is first imported, the property IDs defined in the model are shown on the right legend. Hypersizer automatically builds the associations between the stiffener and the left and right skins, called panel segments. Analysis and sizing optimization of DFEMs are performed on these structural entities for stiffened panels. Hypersizer establishes a one-to-one -one correspondence between the DFEM and CAD for each individual stringer segment and skin pocket. Here we see the numbering scheme for the top skin and stiffeners. The skin pockets are denoted with a C for cells. The location of each cell is defined by two integers. The first denotes the cord-wise pocket number, and the second denotes the span-wise pocket number. Cell 8.15 is selected to show correspondence in the CATIA model. In the CATIA CAD model, you can see the same cell definition exists for correspondence between the models. In this way, the stress model with associated finite element properties and the design model with associated CATIA part definitions are consistently and concurrently updated for each analysis design cycle. Cell 8.15 identified in the CATIA model matches the location in the Hypersizer model. We will now return to the Hypersizer interface to get the optimum skin laminates. Laminates are sequenced to be more producible, finding a balance between reducing ply drops and maintaining a minimum weight. After sequencing, the following tabulated data is exported to both CAD and FEM. Using Hypersizer's native graphics, each individual global ply is identified on the mesh of the surface skin. The flattened view explicitly shows the ply's size and coverage area as they conform to the pattern of stringer and rib locations. The built-up view shows the plies as they would be laid up on the tool. These are the fabrication layup steps. A snap line is used to create a cut plane to examine the panel's cross-section. At this arbitrary spanwise location, you can see the laminate stacks in each cell, as well as how plies are dropped and added between cells. Next, this same data will be displayed in CATIA. In CATIA, we can see a cross-section of the top skin laminate. This laminate data was imported into CATIA from Hypersizer. Once the skin laminate data is in CATIA, it can be processed for manufacturability by generating ply shapes that account for ply staggering and drop-off ratios, as well as offsets to move the drop-add transitions away from areas where the stiffeners are bonded. Bringing up the previously generated cross-section of the top skin laminate shows that the data from Hypersizer is correctly imported into CATIA. In summary, Hypersizer defines for the entire surface skin the overall most optimal CATIA virtual ply definition, and then CATIA refines the ply boundaries to account for draping, drop rates, and stringer frame offsets.
With the hypersizer panel segments defined, the skin laminates are concurrently optimized together with the stiffener laminates to achieve optimal results for the two as a system. A fully defined stiffener laminate is generated and displayed by hypersizer. Stringer 8, panel bay 15 is the example used here. Hypersizer designs the stiffener laminates in accordance with common manufacturing practices. The image on the left shows user-selectable fabrication criteria, such as the use of sublaminates for cap charges, planks, and web ply packs. Each stiffener's laminate is then exported to FEM and to CAD with each ply explicitly defined as a unique drawing part number. Now we will see this same hypersizer data imported into CATIA. In CATIA, stiffener 8 is shown to view the laminate cross-section. This laminate data can be seen to match what was viewed in the hypersizer software. From this point, the designer can refine these laminates based on other design features. These changes can be imported back into hypersizer for stress reassessment with data exchange between the software automated for more responsive design iterations.